Grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It is good that we might be gathered here together for worship this morning on this Mother's Day. It's truly a joyous and wondrous day in the life of our congregation, and let us rejoice and be glad in the gift that God has given us of this particular day. I do welcome all of you who are joining us for worship here in the sanctuary. I also want to welcome all those who are joining us by our live stream broadcast available on the church Facebook page and YouTube is also on the website. Together we are creating this online and in-person community of faith gathered together so that we might truly lift our voices in praise to God today. I do welcome you and especially for those of you who are in the sanctuary, we continue with our safety protocols for worship here together. You'll probably remember that uh, we are wearing our masks. It's a little strange uh, for us to be gathered in this way. Um, based on the risk that congregational singing does, uh, does indicate, we, uh, we are not going to be singing together as a congregation today. Uh, the choir will sing on our behalf, and I do hope that maybe you'll hum or at least read the words and be a part of the music in that particular way. Also, just remember at the end of the service, in the same way that the ushers escorted you in to help you find a seat, they'll return following the postlude to help escort you out as well. As we're gathered to together today, we do know that we've lost one of our members um, over the course of this week. Uh, we do surround the family of Bill Marlowe in our prayers as we held a service for Bill yesterday. If you were able to find the announcement sheet on the website, then you'll see several of the announcements and opportunities for worship and service coming up together over this week and weeks that are to come. The first is that our associate pastor nominating committee needs your help to uh, think about the ministries of our congregation and particular gifts that um, are needed in our associate pastor as they work with us in the areas of congregational care and mission and outreach. So I do hope that you'll use the online link to be able to participate in that survey. If you do need a paper copy, for some reason you can't access the online one, we do have a few of those in the narthex that we could get to you following the service today. Today is Mother's Day. It's a, tr a traditional day in which we receive an offering for the Presbyterian homes of South Carolina. You heard a mi minute for mission about that last week, and I hope that you will consider the ways in which you might contribute to that offering uh, today. You perhaps received an envelope on your way in. We receive our offering for those in the sanctuary on the offering plates in the narthex on our way out of the service after the conclusion of it today. Our next Connections class, for those who might be interested in joining with us at Unity Presbyterian Church or perhaps learning more about our life and ministry together, will be held next Sunday and um, also on May the 23rd. We'll meet at 945. Weather permitting, we'll be outside um, at the preschool entrance to the, uh, to the building, and there's also a Zoom option for those who might want to join us in that way. So I do hope that you'll be a part of that um, opportunity for those who are interested in that. I also want to invite you to the Congregational Picnic. It'll be held at Bethel Woods on May the 23rd. I want you to sign up to be a part of that intergenerational time, and uh, we'll be out at, the, at Bethel Woods in the afternoon then on uh, May the 23rd, so come and be a part of that time as well. Finally, the session over the weekend uh, approved some modifications to our regathering protocols. You'll see more information in an email that will come to you early this week. Uh, but we are lengthening the amount of time that meetings can be held, and we're also shortening the amount of time between those meetings in particular rooms. Um, we are um, also planning to increase the number of people who can come to events in the fellowship hall based on the space that we have there. And um, there's also some slight changes based on vaccination to uh, small groups that might be meeting outside or even inside regarding masks. So watch for more information about that as we continue to exhibit the great love for one another that we have throughout this pandemic and the ways in which we might continue to safely regather and do God's ministry in this place. Let us continue our worship of God together today.
Good morning. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Please join me for our unison responsive reading. Sing to our God a new song. God has done marvelous things. Make a joyful noise to the Lord. Break forth into joyous songs and sing praises. Let the sea roar and all that fills it. Let the world and its people sing together for joy. Let us worship the Lord. We're gathered together for worship. This is a day of great joy as we have opportunity to celebrate the sacrament of baptism this morning. And so at this point, let me invite the Stempler family to come forward and also Elizabeth Bennett, who is representing the session today. Why don't y'all come and sit right over here?
hear these words of Holy Scripture, just as there is one body and one spirit, just as you are called to the one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all. The promise is for you, for your children, for all who are everyone whom the Lord our God calls. Obeying the word of our Lord Jesus and confident of his promises, we baptize those whom God has called. In baptism, God claims us and seals us to show that we belong to God. God frees us from sin and death, uniting us with Jesus Christ in his death and resurrection. By water and the Holy Spirit, we are made members of the church, the body of Christ, and are joined to Christ's ministry of love, peace, and justice. Let us remember with joy our own baptism as we celebrate this sacrament. On behalf of this session, I present Charles Irvin, son of Rachel and Matt Simpler, to receive the sacrament of baptism. Rachel and Matt, as you bring uh, Charles for baptism today, let me ask you these questions. First, do you desire that Charles be baptized? Do you? Trusting in the gracious mercy of God, do you turn from the ways of sin and renounce evil and its power in the world? Do you? Do you turn to Jesus Christ, accept him as your Lord and Savior, trusting in his grace and love? Do you? Will you be Christ's faithful disciple, obeying his word and showing his love? Will you? Relying on God's grace, do you promise to live the Christian faith and to teach that faith to Charles? Do you? Ellie, let me ask you a question, too. Do you promise to be a good big sister to Charlie and help him to learn about Jesus? Yeah. You do. Great. Thank you. <laughs> do we, as members of the Church of Jesus Christ, promise to guide and nurture Charles by word and deed, with love and prayer, encouraging him to know and follow Christ and to be a faithful member of Christ's Church? We do. Then let us affirm together what it is that we believe using words from a declaration of faith. We believe God acts by the Spirit in baptism, calling us by name to be His, cleansing us from corruption, giving us new life, setting us in the fellowship of believers. Baptism reminds us that God loves us long before we can love God, and that faith and repentance are necessary as our response to God's love. Though we are baptized but once, our response should continue and deepen throughout life. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, eternal God, for you nourish and sustain all living things by the gift of water. In the beginning of time, your spirit moved over the watery chaos, calling forth order and life. You led Israel out of slavery through the waters of the sea into the freedom of the promised land. We praise you for sending Jesus, your son, who for us was baptized in the waters of the Jordan, was anointed as the Christ by your Holy Spirit. Through the baptism of his death and resurrection, you set us free from the bondage of sin and death and give us cleansing rebirth. We praise you that in baptism you give us your Holy Spirit, who teaches us and leads us into all truth. Together we pray, gracious God, pour out your spirit upon Charles, upon us, and upon this water, that this font may be your womb of new birth. Strengthen us all to serve you with joy until that day when you make all things new. Amen. Hey, Charlie, you ready? Here we go. All right. Ooh, I'm going to slide you over this way. You know those poops over there? Yeah? Let's go this way. There we go. Charles Irvin, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Defend, O Lord, your servant Charlie with your heavenly grace, that he may continue yours forever, and daily increase in your Holy Spirit more and more, until he comes to your everlasting kingdom. Charlie, you are a child of God. You have been sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and marked as Christ's own forever. Amen.
Through baptism, God has affirmed Charles as a member of this community of faith and has received him into the one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I charge you, the people of this congregation, friends, and family, to love and support Rachel and Matt, assisting them in nurturing Charles. With joy and thanksgiving, we welcome Charles into Christ. For we are all one in Christ to love, encourage, and support you, Rachel and Matt, and we promise to share the good news of the gospel with Charles. There you go. All better. All better. Rachel and Matt, this is definitely a day of great joy for your family, for your church family, for all of us together, and we celebrate this day with you. As you tell Charlie about this day in the future, we hope that you'll remind him of the great love of this congregation and certainly of his God and Father and Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To help you do that, we have a chrismon for your Christmas tree and also his baptism certificate. God bless you all. Thank you very much. recognizing the ways in which we are all children of God, and we celebrate that with the sacrament of baptism. We also do pause for a special moment in our service each week to spend a few moments together with our youngest friends, the children of our congregation. And whether you're with us here in the sanctuary, just stay with your moms and dads, or whether you're joining us online, hope that you'll draw near to be able to be a part of this special time together today. And so I first want to ask you if you have a friend. In our scripture text, we're going to hear about Jesus talking about friends today. So I want to see if you had a friend, or if you had even a best friend. You know, it's really wonderful to have a best friend, but there are some children, maybe even children that you know at school or in your class, who, who may not feel like they have a best friend. They might not feel like they have any friends at all. Well, there was once a child named Christian. Maybe you know his story. He was just in first grade, and he was worried about this. And so he saw a picture on a website about a special bench that you could put on the playground. And he asked, and he thought that it would be really great to have one of these on the playground of his school. And so he knew there were some kids who might be lonely, especially at recess. And so he asked his teacher, and then he asked his principal if they could put a buddy bench on the playground. Well, before it was placed on the playground, because his teacher and the principal all thought this was a great idea, he also had to go, remember he was just in first grade, maybe second grade by this point, he had to go and speak to all the adults at the school board meeting, and he also had a chance to speak to all the students at the school so they could tell them about this new buddy bench. And he explained that if someone was feeling lonely at recess, that they could go and sit on the buddy bench. And then the other kids on the playground, as they were getting ready to play their games, they could know that the person who was sitting there on the buddy bench was lonely and needed a friend. And so they could be sure to invite them to come and to play with their, the games with them. Well, it turned out that this was a remarkable success. It worked, and there are now buddy benches at schools all over the country, even all over the world. Maybe you might even have one at your own school. But it's a way to remember that being a friend is not just talking about being a friend. It's about showing them that you are their friend. 
And that's the kind of friend that Jesus is for all of us, too. Jesus lived and died and rose again for his friends because he loves us that much, and he showed us that we were his friends. So I just want to encourage you, uh, kids, to keep an eye out for those who might need a friend this week, and also to never forget Together, I'll pray a little bit and you can repeat after me. Dear God, Dear God we, thank you for friends. we thank you for friends. Help us to be a good friend. Us to be a good friend. We, thank we thank you for Jesus and his love for us. For he will always be our friend. Our friend. Amen. Thank you so much for being a part of this special time together. Uh, children with us in the sanctuary, if you are going to children in worship today, go ahead and make your way out of the pews as we have a little song of blessing for you to come and meet Miss Lauren here over by the door. This morning, the first reading is from John 15, verses 12 through 17. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love hath no one than this, that someone lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. No longer do I call you servants, for the servant does not know what his master is doing, but I have called you friends, for all that I have heard from my father I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and your fruit should abide so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give it to you. These things I command you so that you will love one another. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth, meditations of all our hearts, be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Some of you may remember the actor and comedian Bob Hope. Hope died in 2003 at the age of 100 years old. Over those hundred years, Bob Hope saw the world. He entertained millions, including servicemen and women from many generations. Along the way, he made some good friends, including the singer and actor Bing Crosby. In 1950, Crosby was quoted as saying, there's nothing in the world I wouldn't do for Bob Hope, and there's nothing he wouldn't do for me. So we spend our lives doing nothing for each other. <laughs> That's a real friend, right? I want to encourage us to spend some time this morning thinking about friends. What would you do for a friend? Maybe more than nothing, I hope. Carol King once won a Grammy for a song entitled, You've Got a Friend in which she sang, you just call out my name, and you know wherever I am, I'll come running to see you again. Winter, spring, summer, or fall, all you have to do is call, and I'll be there. You've got a friend. Yes, she would drop anything for a friend. No matter the season, she would be there when the call came. Do you have a friend like that? Are you a friend like that? Might need to stop and think about it for a minute. 
if, if you're anything like me, there are probably hundreds or thousands of people who are friends on social media. But there may not be more than a handful that I would call if I found myself in a real mess. How many friends do you have that you would really drop everything for? Popular author Brenny Brown talks about how we only need a few friends like that. She says when we're looking for compassion, we need someone who is deeply rooted, able to bend, and most of all, embraces us for our strengths and our struggles. We need to honor our struggle by sharing it with someone who has earned the right to hear it. When we're looking for compassion, we need to find, we need to connect with the right person at the right time about the right issue. She says we need a move a body friend. And she continues, she says, two year, a year or so ago, my good friend called, and as soon as I said hello, she said, you're a friend who would move a body. I could tell by her voice that she was serious, so she lowered her voice and whispered, and what does that mean? Her friend continued, she said that one of her sister's close friends had recently called her sister and asked her to help her move her mom. The friend's mother, who was apparently only invited to visit once a year, struggled with alcoholism. And when the sister's friend came home from work, her mother was passed out on the sofa. It was three o'clock in the afternoon. The kids would be busting in the front door from school in just a minute. So she called because she physically needed help moving her mother. Brown let out a deep sigh and said, yes, you could definitely call me. Her friend explained, I thought so. Yes, I'd call you because I know you would come right away. You'd give me a hug. You'd never look judgmental or disapproving or disgusted. And then you'd say, let's do this. The next day, when you saw my mom at the park or at the soccer game, you'd be kind and respectful. And most of all, it would never cross my mind that I had to say something to you like, please don't tell anyone, because I know you don't do that. Brown said she thought about that conversation for days and how lucky she was to have a couple of move-a-body friends in her life. She also thought about how much time and effort we all spend trying to win the approval and acceptance of people whom we would never call if we were in a real struggle, when there was a body that we couldn't move all by ourselves. Do you think that's what Jesus was talking about in our text for today? Instead of a a move-a-body friend, he says, no one has greater love than this than to lay down his life for his friends. Surely Jesus has the cross in view. He himself will literally lay down his life for those he no longer calls servants, but friends. He's done that for you and for me. But what does that really mean for us? Taken out of context, it can be quite a dangerous idea. Perhaps you remember the children's book by poet and author Shel Silverstein entitled The Giving Tree. It's the story of a boy and an adoring apple tree. In his childhood, the boy enjoys playing with the tree, climbing her trunk, swinging from her branches, and eating her apples. However, as the boy grows older, he tends to visit only when he wants material items at various points of his life. In an effort to make the boy happy, the tree gives him parts of herself which he can then transform into material items, such as money from her apples, a house from her branches, a boat from her trunk. The tree literally lays down her life for the boy. And yet from beginning to end, 
the boy takes from the tree. The boy never responds to the tree's self-sacrifice with any kind of gratitude or self-giving of his own. He just keeps taking and then coming back for more. As one commentator writes, the boy and the tree are both flawed. And in the most old-fashioned way, their flaws determine their fates. The giving tree is in part a disturbing tale of unconditional love, in part a tender tale of the monsters that we are. Yes, the monsters that we are. As recipients of unconditional love, we often readily take advantage of others' compassion and generosity. That's not friendship. To use the language of our text for today, that's treating others merely as servants. Or to translate it even more accurately, the word in Greek literally means slaves. And that can have dramatic consequences. New Testament scholar N.T. Wright reflects on how this scripture about laying down one's life for one's friends was used again and again in sermons and lectures. It was set to music and sung by great choirs with a single meaning in England during the First World War. And the message was, young men, you must lay down your life You must go off to the front line, do what you're told, and if necessary, die for your country. And they did in the tens of thousands. Wright says, God honors, I believe, the self-sacrifice and dedication of those who sincerely and devoutly believed they were doing their duty. But I also believe God judges those who use texts like this as a convenient rhetorical trick to put moral pressure on other people when what they needed was a bit of moral pressure on themselves to ask, why are we doing this at all? If we must have a war, is this really the best way of fighting it? Are these sacrifices the best way of both winning the war and preparing ourselves for the world that will need rebuilding after it's over? Yes, using a text like this to send others to war is not the love that Jesus is talking about. That's a quest for servants, not friends. That's why the context of this passage is so important Jesus shares this command to love one another just after he has reminded them that they only have true life through their connection to him. He is the vine and they are the branches. That's the passage immediately before this one. Because of this intimate connection, Jesus no longer calls them servants, but friends. They know what Jesus is doing because Jesus has made known to them the true nature of God. And God is love. God is there anytime we call. God is the right person at the right time. God's love does not deplete us of life. It gives us life. God does not manipulate us with a call to self-sacrifice. No, God lays down his own life for you and for me. There may be only a few friends who will do that for us. There are probably only a few friends in your own life whom you would do it for. I pray that one of them is Jesus Christ. For he is not a do-nothing friend, but a friend who bears fruit that lasts. He's a -a move-a-body friend. A friend who shows you what life can really be. What kind of friend will you be? when Christ calls. Thanks be to God. 
Let us pray. Oh God, your generosity and grace continue to astound us. Coming at yourself as Jesus Christ to give your life for us. And to call us to respond, O oh Lord. To respond by obeying your commandment to love one another. Seeking to be friends. Trusting you enough to know that when you call us your friend, what an amazing gift it is. We pray these things in the name of our crucified and yet risen Lord. Amen. My friends, throughout our time of worship together, we have multiple opportunities to respond to God's amazing and generous and wondrous gifts to us. We do pause in the midst of our service now as we reflect upon and respond to Scripture read and proclaimed about the ways in which we seek to do that with intention. We do it in the giving of our time and our talents. We do it in the giving of financial resources to support the life and ministry of this congregation. I give you thanks that we have opportunity to see the ways in which your gifts are bearing fruit in our life and ministry together as a congregation, the way in which we extend that grace and love into the community. Today we do so not just in the Mother's Day offering, but in the many other ways that we seek to extend God's love through mission and service in our community and around the world. Perhaps those of you online are using the Donate Now button on the church website. You're mailing in your gifts through the mail or dropping them in the mailbox outside in front of the historic sanctuary. Those in the sanctuary today might be giving gifts in the offering plates at the end of the service. But all of these are ways in which we demonstrate our response to the great love that has been shown for us in Jesus Christ, our Lord.
Friends, please join with me now in prayer. Let us pray. Gracious God, we come this day with thanksgiving for mothers to whom you have entrusted the care of your most precious little ones. We thank you for creating each mom with a unique combination of gifts and talents. We thank you for the sacrifice of self each mom gives for her children, for late nights spent rocking a colicky infant, for hands calloused from washing, wiping, scrubbing, mixing, baking, stirring, hugging, patting, disciplining, holding, writing, erasing, painting, and pouring. We thank you for the gift of time moms give to their children, whether stay-at-home moms, working moms, or moms who have some combination of the two. We thank you for the flexibility of moms, for their tirelessness, their perseverance, and their devotion. We pray that you would give each mom a measure of your strength. Help her to see in every mundane task the eternal significance that you place on motherhood. Help her to understand that the most radical world-changing events may be happening anonymously in her home. We especially pray for single moms who must lean on you so often for the fathering of their children. We thank you that your big arms surround children who may never know their earthly father. We also pray for mothers who never had the honor of bearing children, but whose nurturing has extended to countless children who have crossed the threshold of their lives. Lord, give each mother a worshipful reverence for you, the creator and sustainer of life. Help each mother rest in the knowledge that they are stewards of your children and that only your spirit can produce change in their hearts. May each mother find rest in you. Most of all, O oh Lord, on this day in which we honor mothers, may we love and cherish the special women who have borne us, nurtured us, and prayed for our well-being. May our hearts overflow with gratitude to you who formed and knitted each of us in a mother's womb. We continue to pray as your Son has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Catherine, would you come and join us here? Today we commission Catherine for a time of sabbatical. She has uh, continued with faithful service for over eight years here at Unity Presbyterian Church and has been granted a, a time of rest and reflection and sabbatical this summer. You were supposed to go last summer, but it turns out that pandemic had other plans. And so uh, we are uh, grateful for the opportunity this summer for you to have opportunity to do this as well. God traces our journeys and resting places and is acquainted with all our ways. God will pre preserve our going out and our coming in from this and forevermore. By virtue of our baptism, God calls us to mission and ministry and to holy labor in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. At certain times, God also calls us to occasions of Sabbath rest and reflection 
so that we might be renewed for Christian service. After eight years of faithful service at Unity Presbyterian Church, as we prepare to send Catherine McGregor forth on her sabbatical, beginning this Wednesday, May the 12th through July the 27th, we ask God's blessing upon her and upon us as we look forward to the weeks ahead. So Catherine, I have questions for you. Catherine, are you ready to step away from the obligations of daily congregational life and engage in this period of sabbatical? Will you take time for reflection, renewal, and rest in the life-giving experiences that await you? I will, and I will ask God to help me. Members and friends of Unity Presbyterian Church, in this time of sabbatical, will you support your elected leaders and church staff? Will you share in the mutual ministry that Christ has given to all who are baptized? Will you pray for our church and for Catherine on her sabbatical journey? If so, please respond, we will. We will. Then let us pray. God of all blessing, be with your servant Catherine as she undertakes her sabbatical journey. Grant her a holy departure from this community, safety in all her travels, rest and renewal for her spirit and body, a time which allows her heart to sing and the joy of a grace-filled return. God of all wisdom, send your blessing upon our congregation as we enter this time of sabbatical with Catherine. Guide our leaders through any challenges that may arise. Give to all of us discerning and prayerful hearts, spirits ready to understand and quick to forgive, ears to listen for your word, voices to speak the truth, hands and feet ready to participate and do our part. Make us bold to live out your gospel as we seek to do your will. We entrust this time ahead and pray all these things in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and all God's people together said, Amen. Amen. Our friends, as our service concludes today, may we go forth knowing the great and amazing gift it is that Jesus Christ has called us friends. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen.